Hi, I'm Chris King, and I'd like to welcome you all to our evening. Energize your life, the power of... Yes! yes. Now you can say it better than that. <coughs> yes. Yes. yes! Yes! All right. So, um, we do these evenings to uh, for our grads to keep them involved and learning and just coming together and sharing time. And also to introduce people to the work we do at WINGS, because very often our grads can have a difficult time describing what happens here. <laughs> Is that true, grads? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Uh, they'll say, just go. Well, how come? Well, because it's really great. And so to come to an evening event and get a, a kind of a idea of what happens by actually hearing content, doing a process, and getting to practice, you'll get to see kind of what uh, we do, all right? Now, can an hour and a half <coughs> reflect what's gonna happen in four days? <laughs> no. And yet, you'll get the idea of the kind of work that we do. And what kind of people come? Normal people, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> now, normal, isn't that, that's not a very nice word, is it? What do you think of when you hear the word normal? Box. Pardon me? What was it? A box, a category. A box, a category. Average. Pardon me? Average. Average. Eugene. Boring. 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 Something Boring. Boring. Eugene. Something different than Eugene is not normal. Something different than me. I'm not normal, you know. So, um, welcome. And I'm, I'm uh, delighted that you're here and hope you're ready to not only listen, but also to do some work. Because... That's what we do together, right? I use quotes as a way of uh, kind of laying out the outcomes of the evening. And in the power of yes, I love this John O'Donohue quote. A path of plenitude is opening before you. Isn't that great? <laughs> Though your destination is not yet clear, how many of you know that? <laughs> you can trust the promise of this opening. Oh, thank you. I can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl, unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease and risk. Soon you'll be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses the world that awaits you. Isn't that awesome? So what does that mean to you? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Your soul senses the world that awaits you. How many of you have often gotten clear about something you really want in your life in a dream? That has been one of my biggest openings to things that I want when I'm totally relaxed, not working on anything. And it's like all these pieces come together and I go, oh, you know. So, and I think, um, hey, uh, that that relaxed state of being is a time when we do open. How many of you know being contracted is not your most creative state? <laughs> you know, worrying about stuff and, you know, all tightened up and, you know, so when we relax and actually ask ourselves the question, what do I want? You can have the opportunity to come. Mary Oliver, tell me what it is you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. These go really well together, don't they? Yeah. Uh, over here, Tagore. I have poured my soul into the world, seeking the unknown within the known. And I sing aloud in amazement. You know, very often we think we have to go outside of where we are to have a different experience. And very often, where we are, we're not even seeing it. We'll see one layer of it or one aspect of it instead of the full depth of it. So how many of you um, have been in a daily process and then been really surprised by something that's been there all along? Yeah, it's, you know. One of the things I love about words is when I learn a new word, I see it everywhere. <laughs> Have you had that experience? 
or you become aware of a kind of car that you never knew about before, but it's been there, you just weren't aware of it, and then all of a sudden they're everywhere. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And Rumi, keep knocking and the joy inside will eventually open a window and look out to see who's there. Cool? All right. Well, you know, I looked at my calendar today and I realized it was January 31st. I, I haven't been, I, I know where I go each day and all that kind of stuff, but the first month of the year is done. It went by really fast. Did it go by fast for you? Yeah. So did any of you uh, make New Year's resolutions? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Are you still keeping them? Yep. Any of you not? Okay. How many of you stopped making New Year's resolutions? I expect a lot of you. <laughs> and what is, what is one of the reasons for not making them? Failure. Because I don't finish them. I don't complete them. So I set myself up for a loss. Sometimes your life takes a total opposite change, though, and then you can't follow through with them. Yeah, sometimes. But most often we're not really committed. You know. So you want to know something? You want some great news? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Great yeah, news. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The Dow Jones and Standard and Poor's came out of the highest rate today that matched 1997. Since 1997, today was the highest day on the stock market. That's good news, don't you think? Things are shifting. Okay. So um, why say yes? Why say yes? Now, when I say yes, it's to things that you really want, not what you think you're supposed to do, okay? That's an underlying premise here at Wings, is that getting clear about what you want to do is what, or bring into your life, or behave, or change in your life is based on what you really want, instead of what you think you should or somebody else wants you to do. I want to make a case for saying yes on some pretty, very pragmatic levels. This is not an esoteric evening. This is really, really pragmatic. So physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Those are all pretty pragmatic. Yes? And are they necessary? Yes. Yes? They're all part of who we are, who we, who we be. Okay? So I've been doing some research, and I want to share some stuff with you. Uh, emotional states and physical health. And this is by a whole bunch of guys at Yale. So no, it's good. Right. <laughs> In general, negative emotional states are thought to be associated with unhealthy patterns of physiological functioning, whereas positive emotional states are thought to be associated with healthier patterns of responding in both cardiovascular activity and the immune system, emotional and physical. Positive moods appear to enhance immune system responding and is compromised by negative moods. Negative mood states increase people's susceptibility to illness. People in tests made to feel sad, so they, can, they do things to make them feel sad, report more physical symptoms than those who are made to feel happy and attribute greater discomfort to their sim symptoms. So when somebody's really sad, and they feel bad, the symptoms get way worse than somebody who is happy and has a symptom. They can kind of just roll with it. You know, they accept it instead of magnifying it and making it harder. So learned optimism, one of my favorite books by Dr. Martin Sel Seligman. Any of you that have had anything to do with depression in your life, a great book to read. It's all about how to step out of it in a healthy way, without using a bunch of meds and all that kind of stuff. So page eight first. How many of you think of yourself as a pessimist? Mm -hmm. okay, I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. okay. But this is one of my favorite lines of all time. People with pessimistic habits of thinking can transform mere setbacks 
into disasters. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Uh, severe depression is 10 times more prevalent today than it was 50 years ago. I don't know. And women have depression twice as often as men do. Isn't that something? So I remember Norman Cousins, 1979. He was the one who said he was going to laugh himself to health. He had a very severe... Uh, disease, and he did 10 minutes of laughing, provided him with two hours of pain-free sleep, and the inflammation of the affected tissues reduced as a result of simply laughing. Um, okay. So now this is another one, and I'll stop doing research, so that I love research. I think you can tell. So this is by Barbara L. Fredrickson. She's also a research psychologist. And the title of her thesis was The Role of Positive Emotions in Positive Psychology. Positive emotions signal flourishing. But this is not the whole story. Positive emotions also produce, produce flourishing. So it goes both ways. Moreover, they do so not simply within the present pleasant moment, but over the long term as well. The take-home message is that positive emotions are worth cultivating, not just as end states in themselves, but also as a means to achieving psychological growth and improved well-being over time. We have a reason, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, to get clear about what we want and say yes to it. We end up being happy people. And happy people are healthier. They feel fulfilled and they make a contribution in their own life and in the lives of people around them. You know, I always think um, information like this should be on the front page. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. So in order to say yes, it's important to know what you want, right? Now, how many of you have a little trouble with that one? I <laughs> see. <laughs> Again, the answer. Perfect. <laughs> I just love circles. I don't know why. It's just one of those little high points in my life. <laughs> okay. So, how many of you know you want to create better results? That would be say yes to something, right? Yes. 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 Okay, so what are things that we want to say yes to now that we may not have said it to in the past? What do you want? What kind of results you want? Take risks. What kind of results? Pragmatic. How many of you want to earn more money? I think. Okay. <clears throat> What else? Fun. Healthy weight. Wait, I heard fun. Healthy weight. More time. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, now, we have a certain amount of time, correct? So how would we end up having more time? Time management? Just it. <laughs> Learn how to say no. I mean, in order to say a really clear lot, yes, we got to know how to say no, right? Okay, what else? What do we want? What kind of results? Yes causes more energy. Okay, so increase energy. Any of you want to have more adventures in your life? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back up here to healthy weight. How many of you have concerns about your weight? Raise your hand. Look around. It's a big one, isn't it? It's huge. What else? Better relationships. Healthy relationships. Okay, what else? Simplicity. Simplicity. What else? 
clarity. Greater spirituality. What else? What do you want that you don't have now? What? Contentment. Contentment. Financial security. Joy for no reason. Joy. One of my favorite quotes is Hafiz, I'm happy before I have a reason. <laughs> I heard somebody over there. Peace. Peace? Feeling of success. Focus. Focus. Focus? I have clarity. Focus. Silliness. Silliness? Fun. 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 So any material things that anybody wants? Like a college degree or? I do. You do? <laughs> Airplane. <laughs> okay, so we got a good list. All right. So these are things we want. And how come we don't have them? What are our reasons? Obstacles. Okay, like what? <laughs> Children. Clash of personality. <laughs> <laughs> Children. All right. All right. There's, that's a reason I can't do it because of my kids. Lack what of else? motivation. Perception. Lack of motivation. <laughs> List of excuses. Excuses. <laughs> Excuses? Like what? Let's hear a couple of really good, juicy excuses. I don't have enough time. Uh, I can't. Time. Time. Money. No money. Money. Too tired. <laughs> oh, wow. What else? I can't. Can't. Just not feeling it. Judgments. Yeah, judgments. Judgments. Attachment. What was that? Attachment. Attachment? Like to what? Discomfort. Temptation. Being comfortable. Distractions. Fear of failure. <coughs> comfort level. The comfort level. Like comfort zone? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Being afraid. Okay, so guess what? That's that's the thing that stands right here between it's a long skinny fear. Fear. Okay, so we want these we want results, we want things to be better. And yet what we're settling for is the reason. I'm too tired, I'm too bored, it's going to take so long. My kids will be grown before I can go back to school. I'll have gray hair. I mean, you know, we can do long lists. And they're all based in our fear, correct? Mm -hmm. Every single one. Every single reason, every single excuse is based in our fear. And when you look at fear, in all the research on fear, they found that all fears boil down to a fear of loss of something. That's why we settle for less than we really want. At least I have this. How many of you have done that in a relationship? At least I have this, you know. Please don't even challenge. So one of the great things, uh, that's over here in our fear is our denial. Because if we really in the, looked at our life with clear clarity and with accountability, we would see exactly what it's important for us to do, but we don't want to see it. Because I might need to do something different than I'm doing right now, okay? So what is your most consistent no reason? 
What is your most consistent no reason? Now, I'm, we all know it boils down to fear. But what is your most consistent way of verbalizing that? Current commitments. I don't have the right tools. Current commitments. I'm committed. I'm already I'm committed. Obligated. Okay. I'm already obligated. I can't afford to. Can't yeah. afford it. What else? My. Do it later. <laughs> later. Wanting to change. Too tired. Tired. Shrouded in a sense of responsibility. You know, I have to be more concerned about other things than my own. My children, my boss, whoever you name it. Everybody's so I get a sense of obligation. I've got to take care of others. <clears throat> Well, isn't this interesting? This is what we want. And we're going to bed with this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So. <coughs> I wonder if my hair <laughs> That's the word sex. <laughs> I thought of that after I said I was going to bed with this, but. <laughs> You draw a line at too tired for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, it's kind of sad. People with dull or unfulfilled lives very often think that their lives are dull by chance. These are things happening to them. How many of you can relate to that? You know, the stars are not in the right formation. <laughs> The humidity is too high, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in reality, everyone chooses more or less what kind of events will happen to them by their conscious patterns of either blocking, resisting, fearing, or accepting, yielding, and saying yes. <clears throat> but we think it's happening by chance. Your life <coughs> is your most Precious thing. It just is. And very often we don't think that. How many of you wake up and go, oh, dang on it? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And a lot of that, oh, damn, is because you're thinking about stuff you're going to do that day that you don't want to be doing. And when we learn to say yes to what we really love in our lives and bring ourselves fully to it, you wake up with a big yes in your heart. Now, that may not happen overnight. Um, how many of you know you have patterns of behavior that have uh, years of, you, you have years of practice with? <laughs> so what we do at Wings is learn new skills and tools to take one step at a time toward what we really, really want in our lives so that we can be in service to ourselves, to others, and be healthy, happy people, make a contribution. So stepping out of your comfort zone is the way to get more out of your life. And we do that by <laughs> saying yes to what we really, really love. So thank you for coming. This has been fun for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.